In this video, we'll be using GIMP to colorize an old photo. This is an old photo of my grandmother. I want to say it's from the 1940s. The first thing we'll do is go to File and then go to Open. I'm going to open up another image here just for a reference to get some skin tones and some hair color ideas. Then we'll go back to the main uh, photo and we'll add a layer. So we'll call this layer Face and click OK. That'll add a new layer. And it's very important that we select this layer and change the mode to overlay. Then we can draw or add brush strokes on top of this uh, without changing and overriding the pixels. We'll go to the color picker on this reference and choose a skin tone that we like. You could also just choose a, a skin tone without using a reference picture. And then we'll go into the brush tool. We can change the actual brush and the size. But what we want to do is just left click and hold and just draw the outline on this layer. So there, we're not using any masking, we're not doing anything too special, we're just literally drawing and coloring in these pixels. But like I said, since we're in the overlay mode on the layer, it's not going to overwrite the pixels, so the darker pixels will still show through. So we're not really just, we're not just drawing a solid color. So I'll speed up this process. You'll go around and do the whole outline everywhere where the, the skin color is, and then we'll change the size of the brush larger to fill in all those areas. And the advantage of doing it on its own layer is that we can go in and change the color afterwards. So we see it doesn't look quite right here. So we can go up to Colors and then go to this Hue Chroma, and we can adjust the lightness and darkness. We can adjust the hue of the of this color and we can go back and do this as many times as we want we're applying it to this entire layer and so it's important to keep the layers separate so the next thing we'll do is the hair so we'll create a hair layer select that layer make sure that we have the mode set to overlay again uh, oh first we'll choose the the hair color for a reference get into the brush but make sure what this mode has to be overlay or else it'll just it'll just block out those pixels um, from the hair that the kind of the detail so we'll do the same process. We go through and we just do the outline of all the hair, uh, where it meets the background and where it meets the face. Uh, and then we'll make the brush much larger once the details are done. And this part can take a little bit longer because hair can be tricky. So you may just have to take some liberties and just fill in areas where there's not really hair on the outside. Um, and again, this one's going to look a little bit strange at first, uh, but we can always get in here by going to colors and we can, do, we can do a lot of different things, but this hue and chroma is pretty nice here because we can adjust the lightness and darkness as well as the actual hue of, of brown that we're using for this hair color. And you could even use color tools to change the color. We could change it to red or change it to more of a, a lighter blonde color possibly. Um, we can soften the edges, so using the sharpness and blur. Uh, in the blur mode, we can just soften these edges here a little bit against the background and against the face. This, especially with hair, uh, this is nice to do, but we can do it with all the different layers. We'll add another layer here now just for the eyes, uh, and you can choose any eye color you want. You could use a reference photo, or you can just choose an eye color, and then we'll just quickly come in here and do the same thing with the eyes, and this just adds color to the eyes. We keep the, the lightness and darkness, the pixels from behind, but we're adding a color on top of those pixels. And then we can, um, just like with the other layers, you're starting to see a, this repetitive process of where we can come in and change the colors, change the lightness and darkness. That's really what happens with everything here. We do the same thing with the lips. And then we'll go through and do the same thing. We can do this for the background and for the uh, clothing colors as well. Another good tool is this colors levels though. This kind of adjusts if you're ha having trouble with the lightness and darkness, this kind of gives you more control over the light and dark pixels and just all the, um, how vibrant pixels uh, appear. So we see these lips are still a little bit bright. We'll get in and change that. And notice here where the face meets the hairline, we can use the eraser tool here and set the opacity down. So if we, if without opacity down, it's erasing too hard, but if we lower down the opacity, and use a brush with very soft edges, we can come in and sort of soften up some of these um, hard areas where the face meets the hair. Um, we'll adjust the lips a little bit again. Um, you can really adjust all kinds of different things. This process is obviously sped up. Um, this total drawing was maybe, t I think, uh, 20 or 30 minutes in, in real time. Um, so we can add more. Th these are for the clothes. We'll add another layer here and just do the same process with the clothes. 
and you can choose again any colors you want and you don't have to really worry about um, getting the wrong color because this is all just one color and the detail is showing through from the layer behind it and so you can always change the color for example we'll choose a, ye a yellow here but this could be changed completely and we could make this blue again in the future once those brush strokes are drawn we can change to any color down here at the bottom we're going to use the face to color in this arm color so you can add multiple things to, to a different layer, but you just want to keep similar colors on the same layer to make it easy to adjust that. You're not going to want to do everything on the same layer, even though it is possible. Well, that's just about it for the process of coloring a black and white photo. I'm not going to show the part here coloring the background, but you can also color the background and change that as well. But if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and I look forward to catching you in the next video.